Hello and welcome to Maths with Jacob. This lesson will focus on decimal of a quantity. Finding the decimal of a quantity is similar to finding a fraction of a quantity. We need to remember that the word of means multiplication. Finally, sometimes it may be useful to change the decimal to a fraction before we multiply. Let's look at some examples. Example 1. Find 0 0.7 of 28 kilograms. Now in earlier videos when we saw multiplication of decimals, we said that you just put down the numbers in the initial stages when you're doing the multiplication. Just write the numbers. So remember here the of means multiplication so we have 0 0.7 times 28. When we do the multiplication, just do 28 times 7. Now work out what digits go down here. So they're 196. 7 eighths are 56. Put down the 6, and here we have traded the 5. 7 twos are 14, plus 5 is 19. So we have 196. Okay, so what we had when we did the multiplication was just 196. Now go back to the original calculation here, what we're asked to do and you'll see there's one digit after the decimal point. In the answer, you have one digit after the decimal point. Okay. The 6 is the digit that's after the decimal point and there's only one of them. So here's the summary in case you didn't remember. In the original calculation we had one digit after the decimal point, so we have one digit after the decimal point in the answer and that's why it's 19.6 kilograms. Let's see how it works here. We're multiplying 0 0.43 by 6, so 43 times 6, 6 threes are 18, trade the 1, 6 fours are 24, plus 1 is 25. So we ended up with 258. That's what we ended up with. There are two digits after the decimal point in the answer there are two digits after the decimal point. So that's why it's 2.58. 0 0.9 of $3. Remember of means multiplication. So we do that multiplication. 3 times 9. That gives us 27. So when we ended up with 27, there's one digit after the decimal point in the original calculation. So we have one digit after the decimal point in the answer. Now $2.7 is really $2.70, so you can change it to that if you like. $2.70. 0 0.4 of 160. Now, we said that sometimes you can change the decimal to a fraction, so this is a good example where we can do that. So 4 over 10 times 160 over 1. Now we've done examples like this in the past. 4 times 160 is 640. 10 ones are 10. 640 over 10, so we're dividing by 10, so the answer is 64. 0.23 of 34. So we multiply 34 by 23. 3 fours are 12. 3 threes are 9 and 1 is 10. Put down the zero because when you multiply by two, you're actually multiplying by 20. Two fours are eight, two threes are six. Add all these up to give us seven eight two. So when we do that, we have seven eight two. In the original calculation here, or the question, there are two digits after the decimal point. So in the answer, we have two digits after the decimal point. 7.82. Multiply 34.67 by 8. So that's simple multiplication. 8 7s are 56. 8 6s are 48 plus 5 is 53. 8 4s are 32 plus 5 is 37. And 8 3s are 24 plus 3 is 27. So you get 27736. So we have 27736. In the original calculation, we have two digits after the decimal point. That's all we have. In the answer, you've got two digits after the decimal point. 277.36.
and find point zero 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 six of five six four three. This looks difficult, but basically all you're doing, you're going five six four three times six. When you do that multiplication, six threes are eighteen, six fours are twenty four, plus one's twenty five, six six is a thirty six, plus two is thirty eight, and six fives are thirty, plus three is thirty three. So three three eight five eight. So we have three three eight five eight. In the original, we had one, two, three, four digits after the decimal point. So you have four digits after the decimal point in the answer. So it's 3.3858. So this video has shown us how to find the decimal of any given quantity. We've seen some good examples. And basically, in the end, when you get the answer, you just have to decide where to put the decimal point, and we've seen some simple rules which help us to decide where the decimal point is situated in the final answer.